Welcome to The Purge. I'm Rashad Brown, and this is The Purge, where I purge about this, that, and whatever. And yellow too. This, that, and whatever. It could be sports, it could be music, it could be the world. Big sis, I know I was supposed to start this a couple weeks a week ago, but uh, just, I don't know. Just got called up and whatever. So here it is. Here's my first purge, and this is a purge that's near and dear to my heart. I know I told some, I told you that I was going to purge about the NBA, and I got plenty of time to purge. It'll be the it'll be the NBA till about you know till June so uh, I got plenty of NBA purges coming but this is this is the first one I figured I'd start the first one off with being that the NFL season started we got some 0 and 2 teams we got some 0 and 2 teams that 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 have been struggling for years so you know we're talking about coaches on the hot seat this is all you know Mike McCarthy well, I guess they did still a win the other day so I guess he might not be on the hot seat as, at this very moment, but coaches on the hot seat and coaches in NFL coaches in general. And me being a Titans fan, I came in with, with my, my, my first NFL coach was Jack Pardee. And from Jack Party, we were moved on to good old Jeff Fisher. And Jeff Fisher was the was the coach of the Titans for the Oilers slash Titans for about 17 years, I think. I have to look it up to be for be sure. And I should have did my research for this, but this is random, and I just thought about recording now. So Jeff Fisher. So we were a run and shoot passing offense when he when he got there and by the time he he was a defensive coordinator and by the time he was named the head coach we had a fullback and a and a running back and we were now a running a running team overnight. He became, he had a tight end player, fullback I think, and Chris Chandler was the QB and we were getting ready to draft McNair and we moving from Houston to Tennessee so he was he was the coordinator of all this stuff changing the offense moving he was you know he was the coach when we moved kept us afloat eight and eight Mr. Coach Mr. Eight and eight good old Mr. Eight and eight that's how that's that became his nickname partly because of those first few seasons we went eight and eight and we were playing in Vanderbilt Stadium and we were the Tennessee Oilers we drafted Eddie George Drafted Eddie George, D. McNair, we had an awesome offensive line, and we were building this program. You know, the defense was being built. First season in our stadium, we go to the Super Bowl, we have a great season. We almost win the Super Bowl. Well, you know, we almost tied the game up and take it over time, but we lose about six point seven points, touchdown, or, yeah, touchdown, 23 to 16 or whatever it was. And that whole, and pretty much his whole run, we were a consistent football team. If we had a if we had a steady quarterback, we didn't have any catastrophic quarterback injuries. If we had Steve playing, we were always a playoff team. We couldn't, we didn't beat Bill Belichick and the Patriots a couple times. We didn't beat, uh, we actually beat Peyton in the playoffs in his first playoff game. Actually, that was the year we went to the Super Bowl. I say all this to say Jeff Fisher was a good coach. And his reputation has been completely tarnished, and and he's just he's 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 the butt of jokes now, as if he was not a good coach because of because of Jared Goff and Sean McVay. Now there are levels to coaches, and I will say right here, right here, quick, fast, that Sean McVay is a better football coach in 2020, whatever year he got the job, 2017, 2016, whatever year he got the job. Than Jeff Fisher is, but you can win 
Jeff Fisher's way of football. You can win his style of football. They were they were a respectable team in St. Louis when he was there coaching. But they lost their quarterback in the preseason every season. So, I mean, if they want to judge him from having backup quarterbacks in St. Louis every year because 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 Mark the Sam Bradford couldn't 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 make it through the preseason. Then that, I mean, well, we, that's fake news. I, I I call that fake news. Every year that Steve was healthy and the team was healthy, we made the playoffs. Like, and for him to his for his rep, reputation to be so eight Mister Eight and Eight and this and that and all the, the slander and disrespect since he left the Rams because of the 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 turnaround from Sean McVay. From him to Sean McVay with Jared Goff, right? I, I can almost, I can, I can, I can kind of respect that to a certain extent, but it shouldn't tarnish his whole his whole career. The man got 150 wins or something like that. Like, you think how many coaches are winning even going to win in Tennessee? You know how many times we were overmatched and not in my team and the Titans played above their heads and, and, and beat teams that they had no business beating. That's coaching. Now, could we have been a little more, you know, open on offense over the years? Yeah, we could have been, but who do we have? That's why I'm mad now because we traded away the only good receiver we've ever had. We've never had a good receiver ever. We've had we – we've had guys – Develop into solid, good, good, good. Derek Mason ended up being good, but he was he was a drafted as be a special teamer. He worked his way to becoming a good receiver, and he had about three good years as a receiver for the Titans, maybe four. But he was five. It was my size. Like we had a big, strong, young, thousand yard back to back receiver on a running team at that. And we just trade them away like we can, like we just, like we just known for having good receivers. I don't understand. I still don't understand that. But regardless, we've never nobody nobody wants to go to Tennessee. We don't sign free agents. I mean, you know, we draft decent. We 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 we, we normally have a good offensive line and things like that. We you know we 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 have a pretty pretty smart organization, but we've never had an offense. Uh. Since the since the run and shoot, and we saw how how great that was for us in the playoffs. That was that was running gun. We had a, we've always been a defensive running team since you know since he's been since he's, he was there, and even after he left, we we continued to be a, a defensive running team. But we never had to we haven't had, with the exception of Steve and Warren, the quarterback, right? So I. I say all this to say why why don't they look at the actual what happened? <clears throat> You're not gonna win in this league without a QB. When we had Vince Young, we made the playoffs with Vince Young. Vince Young, when he left the Titans, I don't think he's taken a snap. Is that I don't think he's taking a snap in a, in a in a in a live NFL game without us, and we made the playoffs with him. Like my coach the, the Jeff Fisher, was we we went ten and zero and thirteen and three with Kerry Collins as the QB. Like take away some turnovers and some injury, a, a major injury and, a, and some turnovers, we might win the Super Bowl in two thousand eight. Like we had a dominant defense and an offense that was like we had the we had the we had a we had the top running game in the league top two, three running game in the league. We pass. Our passing game has always been shaky. I, 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 if, that's what, if, that's, if that's the indictment that you want to put on Fish, then then so be it. But we had, but 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 he did coach an MVP. Like, our offense was pretty pretty open when we had Steve at his highest, at his highest peak with Derek with Mason and, and Wycheck. Like, we've had offenses that were, that were pretty, you know, hard to stop based off our running attack and what we did off that. So when we had when he had the QB, when he had the team, when we were healthy, we 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 won, we went to the playoffs. I mean, now Bill Belichick beat a lot of a lot of people. 
I can go through our whole playoff career, our whole playoff career. You know, when you're going up against the best defense of all time, arguably the best defense of all time, yeah, okay, we we, we lost. <laughs> we lost we, we lost the Super Bowl, came back the next year, 13-3. and three. The Ravens came in and they ravened us. They did what the Ravens do, you know. Uh, let's see, after that, has had a, had a, had a, had a down year had some injuries that's when we figured out that Steve could we we Steve had had progressed past the uh you know run it on first and second down and throw it on third so we were throwing it and okay yeah we can throw this thing so the next season we you know we go have a rough start to the season we end up end up 11 end up 12 and, 12 and 4 I believe had a two seed had a bye week uh Beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in the home playoff game. And then lost to the Raiders in the AFC Championship game. That team was loaded. Uh, they lost to the Super Bowl. But that was another nice little playoff run. Then the following year, we had the, we had the year where we played the Ravens. Get all these mixed up. Uh, yeah, I think that was the next year. We played the Ravens. And we beat the Ravens on the road. And we lost to the Patriots uh, in the second round. And then we had the and so once then Steve was gone after that, we go draft Vince Young. We had we had a down year two. I think we had a two and fourteen season. We were basically tanking for one of the QBs, Matt Leonard or Vince Young or whoever, Reggie Bush, whatever we were gonna do. Draft Vince Young. Make the playoffs with him. His second season. Third his third season, he gets hurt in the first game. We had drafted Chris Johnson that year. We go ten and zero. Like, I, don't, I mean, I don't, it's whatever. So this is my first purge about my co my my coach Jeff Fisher, who can't get he can't get an interview. I don't know at this point if he even wants to coach anymore, but I know he did after he got fired last time. I thought I was gonna see him in college because he's he's that kind of coach. He's a you know he's like a low budget Pete Carroll. You know, Pete Carroll would 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 not without the success. Without the level of success, Pete Carroll being, you know, being that he's a Super Bowl champion, should be a two-time Super Bowl champion and a national championship coach. Less respected uh, Pete Carroll, but the same kind of coach. Gets the most out of his team, energetic, always, you know, not a, maybe not a brilliant X's and O's. We don't ever talk about Pete Carroll as, as an X's and O's coach, but we talk about him as a, being a as a coach, as a un uniter, as an atmosphere that players want to want to be around, and you never heard any player say any bad thing about Steve Jeff Fisher. You hear the media men, the talking heads, talk about him and slander him, but Mister Eight and Eight, you know how hard it is to go eight and eight with some of them teams. Well, they don't. Nobody does the homework. Well, I know I was there, and I need to stop slandering. My guy, Jeff Fisher. Thanks for checking out The Purge.